following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Was out yesterday seeing Eddie off. He'd been here for three weeks from southern Spain on the coast down there where Portugal meets Spain. It's a great little area. But uh, he had a taste of the other side of the good life over here for a couple of weeks and we uh, got him out of here yesterday so we had kind of a a firm dinner on his honor and uh things went quite well and i'm happy to be back and the first thing i want to talk about today is the japanese yen we've been looking at this and i'm showing it on my screen right now we've been looking at this as a long only play where we're getting right back smack dab into this inflection point and this inflection point resides around 119.68. And this is, you know, if you've been following this show, the reason I want to focus on this is as we kind of go back in time, I want to go back to our weeklies. Uh, you know, Tom and I were actually kind of speaking about this as the long trade. It was, good Lord, it was kind of winding, 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 building some cause, I guess, as Tom would say, but, you know, building some spring loaded action. And uh, some, some great fundamentals behind it and some really good technicals here, and considering what the dollar was doing at the same time against the carry trade. So what we were looking at here was leveraging off this 101.33. Now, as soon as this thing took off, gained some legs, we actually closed above 105 and some change here, 105.44. Break out and to go back and to retest. And, you know, we're always looking for support areas. And during this pullback from, I'm just going to do a little bit of a history lesson here. So maybe I'll learn a couple of things from it. From 110 back down into this 105 area, we, we were looking at some daily profiles and some inflection points not to have to wait on a long term basis, you know, to miss the move again. So, if, you know, if you're waiting to, for pullbacks in the weekly profiles that aren't there, as we had kind of risen up, you, you really missed a lot of this. So the thing I'm trying to say is, is and this gets into a, a point I want to make this morning, is as we do these kind of lurches forward and then we pull back and then lo and behold, okay, new profile attempting to appear below price action. These are very long-term bullish situations that you have to pay attention to. And you look for those weekly closes just like we did there. Now, we have the daily profiles in the mix here. And I personally got stopped out twice in this pullback, trying not to miss the less, the next leg up in the end. But this was kind of Custer's last stance. This is where we could really kind of weekly over text precedence over daily over 240 on the line. And then, you know, we had the, the massive catapult move um, that happened. So what we've been doing since the 101 area, and we're 2,000, 2,100 pips above that area at this stage, is we've been looking to buy support and buy breakouts when they're offered. Now, as we look at this on a long-term basis, you've got a massive uh, marginal line here around 117.74. I'm still looking at that as, you know, got to start thinking about saying uncle below that level on a long-term basis. But there's some really, really good trading opportunities that happen within these weekly profiles as we kind of move up. Now, there's not a lot of conflicting factors for this to continue to move up. And that means that I don't see a lot of divergence patterns that are happening to cause me to, to kind of pass on, on or, or look at some of these recent rallies up with suspect eyes. So everything being said that we've talked about, this is our daily profiles. This is, you know, back in the Jan first of the year since we've looked at the end, we've always said, OK, let's find support. Let's buy the breakouts. And when we bought the breakout there, we had a little bit of reversal. We got to take our medicine. But these buy support, buy the breakouts on the whole, as you can see, buy the, buy the support, buy the breakout. It's not a lock. It's not a crystal ball thing where the guy gets the, you know, everybody at the end of the, 
that the movie is happy. Um, but we have to kind of put the probabilities in our favor when we're looking at things like this. So as we kind of break down, we may want to pass on, on staying in the markets. You know, then we're kind of looking at the bounce situation. Maybe the breakout situation got stung a little bit there by the support, by the support, by the breakout. And we just have to keep turning the rents the same way, in my opinion. And the yen with this dollar continuing to trail down a little bit is even showing its hand even stronger now. Now, you know, Japanese government, we talked about this, you know, I want to beat a dead horse, but you've got some technical reasons on your fate on your side of the, of the fence. You've also got some fundamental reasons. <laughs> um, so as we look at the Japanese yen, we are still looking at it from a buy support buy breakout standpoint. <clears throat> All right, so we're at a high probability area, 119.69. Stops can be oriented. I know we've kind of been rattling around here lately, but you never know when, just like those automated systems, they're not a system unless they take every high probability setup that you've done the back testing on. And most of those systems, one of the best systems I've ever seen was right 35% of the time only. So you got to keep all these things in mind when you're talking about trading a so-called system right you're going to be wrong at times and you're going to have to take the medicine because you don't know how deep down the rabbit hole some of those losses can get if you've been trading for a while you uh probably know exactly what i'm talking about so same old adage cut the losses short let the profits ride and that's some of the things that we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis and i hate people that tell me that by the way because i'm like oh really that's a great concept. But if you step back and think about it, it, it is the core of all betting strategies and, in my opinion, trading strategies. So always keep it in mind. It's like, what was that thing on Saturday Night Live a long time ago? Stuart Smalley and Daily Affirmation. Or something. That, was, that was a funny skit that uh, Al Franken used to do. Now Senator. Here we go. Let's take a look at the at the U.S. dollar. This is something again relative to the yen. I mean, this is this is technically not good here. We talked about got to kind of get back clean and clear of 95.50 basically to start thinking about this on the long side, or having some new inflection points posed here. If you've been looking at this show, you've seen you know some of the you know closes below go back. Profiles appearing above, very bearish, touching these things, providing high probability situations. Still the case, and, and no reason to start nibbling on the long side yet for this particular product. It's just, it's just not there. So um, as we continue to take a look at a couple of currencies, I want to go back into the euro, and we've kind of been able to pass on this. Very non-directional, if anything, longish at this stage, showing the weeklies here. Getting above 110.5, 111, closing above, going back and retesting in the middle of a fair auction and clean and clear of those daily profiles here. And, you know, we talked about profiles appearing below, bullish, you know, still not the time to go into this thing on the short side, even though the fundamental, you know, feelings that I have about this product are just, you know, very there. Um, but, you know, we've got to, got to have these inflection points to lean on from a technical side to even get back into that mode and right now they're not there and we've been talking about passing on these things can you make some money allowing the euro to kind of meander around and bounce around in short-term time frames the answer is yes but i'm looking personally for the longer term type high leveraged areas that uh that we can kind of get our arms around and and uh put some uh lay some wood to it as they say so we're going to go to the British pound here. This is something that we talked about staying away from on the short side after we got into 154.40, 154.60. Why those numbers? Um, you know, here's this crowding action. We talked about the weekly for highs, and at the same time, we showed this on the scanner, dual time frame lineups around the daily for highs and weekly for highs at the same time. So, again, passing on those shorts around those inflection points and waiting for the breakout that seemingly has worked out quite well. Is that going to last? What do you do now? So here's the 240s on this trade. Let's pull this up. So guys who are trading that breakout and, you know, 
still 240s appearing below price action. That's very, very bullish. And I'm looking at this from the short term of a support area 156 down into 155.71. So I know that's a big range. What is that? 40, point, 40 pips on the, on the British pound. So this is your stingy side right here. And this is kind of where your load upside is on the uh, 155.71 on the British pound. Do I think it's going to go higher? I think it's got a great chance to go higher, actually. Even though we've come a long way, we've come up in the past month and a half from the 140, 145 and a half area. So the pound has lurched four twelve divided by 145 is 12th. What is that? 6%, 7%. 7 percent move in the last month and a half. Doing the big math. Somebody's probably going to correct me. But uh, that's the situation on a couple of currencies that we follow. We're going to get into the S&Ps. Um, you know, this has just been the most non-directional situation you could ever dream up. And we've talked constantly about passing on the longs on this particular trade and trying to hit some targets down below and using the 240s to kind of do that little deal. And we've also been talking about using the 240s to kind of mitigate uh, some of the possibilities of it doing that ricochet action like it did yesterday i don't have to tell you that so as we had talked about the day before yesterday 2103 was sitting there on the 240 so we were looking for reasons why on the short side because our breadth is so and i'm going to pull this in here this is our new scanner which we've got our user password situation here now and guaranteed pound by tuesday or wednesday but i think we're looking at friday here so Again, here's our S&P breadth situations. This has just been a flip-flop situation. No true direction. If you've been watching this show, been just not a big fan of going along the S&Ps. They're trying to find some reasons to go short. So, And as we look at this, let me just pull up our landscape view here really quick. Excuse me, our desk. Uh, Ant crawled on my forehead there, but it did. Let's go to our indices, and let's just kind of show you our daily global view here relative to profiles um, and these colors are going to get a little calmed down before you guys receive this but um, this is the intermediate side and the s ps are with that you know red batch here so a lot of the global indices have turned still got the shanghai the dk the FTSE, and the Bo vespa hanging in there and we can drill down into these and get some great trading ideas but the fact of the matter is and what i was trying to say the s ps have been uh, breadth negative basically we were looking for 12103 below to get short this we had the orange bar which is also in the scanner we want to talk about when we come back folks Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 70 25% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now, now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Before we get back to the S&Ps, I want to pull up June natural gas. And, you know, as you can see pretty plainly this is kind of been a trailing long term this is our weekly view long term situation to sell breakouts and sell resistance when you can um and you know back in february provided an opportunity there kind of closed above not much but uh open up in reverse so that you know that kind of gave us a little bit of a a little bit of a puzzle there to try to figure out for a couple of days there but uh quickly reversed and got back in the fair auction broke down below this is actually much more interesting now though because we have closed above our most you know long sought out weekly profile above that 2.782 area and then we've gone back this week already and retested it so we always you know a lot of our automated systems won't buy the initial breakout that we use they'll okay let's just let's see what's happening here let's try to not chase it past some barriers that we want to see it kind of get clean and clear of some hurdles that we've got set in the systems let's kind of wait until we have the retest and that retest this week and i have not looked at this until someone in the in the den had just asked me to pull it up but uh the low 2.785 is this week the top of the box is 2.782 so it's, it's, that that's really really cool how that worked out it usually doesn't work out to the tick on the long term but we got away from that area relatively quick and that's what you want to see um you know as a lot of folks would say just getting away from that price now the dmz if you will was up into 2.824 what's that that's another inflection point to get clean and clear of the current daily profile so here's the situation here 
So in my opinion, and we always kind of look at things this way, you've got a chance to look at that 270, was it 272? Sure of that. Yeah, I'm sorry, 278, 2782 up into 2824 has a little bit of a DMZ there that you can kind of orient stops down below. Now, here's that kind of come back and retest into the DMZ. It happened the past two days. Um, and I'm not waving at people. I'm trying to get a mosquito away from you. There's, there are mosquitoes in this country, folks. So that's where we kind of always look at it with the Paul Tudor Jones kind of like, where's the risk? Where do I put my stops? What's my downside? To keep playing this game, I mean, that's kind of where you orient your, your downside around. And, you know, what can happen here? Anything can happen. And I like the way this thing's acting, um, you know, but that's kind of where you orient stops, in my opinion. And, and I think it's, you know, looking at, some of the other factors here um you know i don't see anything to kind of really cause me to think anything different here i mean i haven't been following natural gas but as we had made lower lows we had made higher lows on our navigators you can see that i could draw a trend line higher low higher low higher low higher low <laughs> as natural gas had made lower lows so i kind of like the way this thing started breaking above 2060 and then kind of did the technical damage on the weekly. And I, I just see this as a major long-term change here with natural gas, but uh, you know, we can be wrong and we can, you know, we can take our medicine if we're wrong, but we don't, don't want that to be as painful as, as it doesn't have to be actually. So if I've rambled enough about natural gas, when I could have probably done that in 30 seconds, send me an email and tell me to fix that. Here we go. So let's take a look at the S and P's. All right, and thanks for bringing that up. It's actually a nice looking trade right now. Okay, so going back to our 240s, considering the breadth to finish what we we're talking about before, on the S&Ps, below that 2103 was kind of giving me the little bit of the green light that we're breaking down the 240s and I can use that breadth connotation that it was flip-flopping around the negativity that it was showing on the intermediate to kind of get short now. On the scanner, you will see these orange bars. And actually, on the scanner, you'll see the orange bars even start appearing before they do on, on an e-signal type platform. So uh, I'm going to pull this up really quick. So what I'm trying to say is if you have this thing, and I'm going to go right back into our futures. It's refreshing there. Okay, so here we go. So as you can see, some of these yellow um, cells, those are saying that you know new new profile attempting to appear above on, on Coco on the 240. And we're going to complete this little talk when we come back from break, guys. And then we're going to get into a couple of stocks that are having earnings announcements this afternoon, like Cisco, Jack in the Box, JC Penny, Shake Shack. Be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. You know what's cool taking something that's good for you something specifically formulated to help with weight loss better sleep stress reduction and the need to detox nico our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment but today our food sources no longer contain the vitamins minerals and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong that's why we need primal edge daily nutrition it includes a special blend of ionics oil-based vitamins minerals fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form primal edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And what I was trying to say here on the 240s was, you know, you've, you've got these yellow cells and you can get a kind of a pre-indication with this scanner when you have situations like this and those indications and if you drill down into some of the paragraphs that we have here i'm just gonna float you over to coco here caution the longs okay so this has been something in a long mode when we have a yellow cell <clears throat> caution the longs in our case here uh let's see we don't have any bottoms here but in the case with the S&Ps, would have been a caution to shorts situation uh, because we, you know, had a new box attempting to appear, and that's something we we want to use that as somewhat of a target-rich environment when we're looking at uh, trying to figure out whether we take some profits off the table or or continue to let it slide. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the notes. Uh, these are, again, you know, like, what, what is the 10-year at? 230, 225? I mean, what is this? All, you know, <laughs> we're going to hell in a handbasket? I don't think so. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a very low rate. And we talked about these weeklies. Here's the 10-year on the weeklies, and we talked about this 127.11. We've been rattling around below, but a weekly close um, hasn't happened yet. And how do you trade this? It's easy to see things after the fact. 
but what I want to do here, and by the way, I'm shooing a, a mosquito. It's not like there's mosquitoes in every building in the Philippines. There's, this is a brand new facility, and you know, there's some construction going on. And by the way, our telco, just because there's probably some blurry screens and maybe some uh, voice that's not as clear as possible, um, they're actually putting in a major trunk line of fiber here right now. We're still using a DSL because we got in here early, so it's not uh, the country's fault or the f facility's fault. It's it's just a little bit of a delay in construction. So thanks for bearing with us. And I may do the show from another site for a little while until that fiber trunk line gets in, which is imminently happening. All right. So looking at the 10 year, we're kind of having, having a little bit of problems with our data here on eSignal right now, but uh, on the daily. But the most important thing is really these weekly closes. And I really don't see any technical damage yet on the long term on the 10 year and we you know, still have a very, very low rate. So just kind of step back and think about that. We're having a pretty significant move up in the 10 year right now. In fact, about a whole handle and a half in the last eh, 24 hours maybe. So uh, that's the situation on the 10 year. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move into, uh, before we do that, we're going to take one more look at gold. I'm just going to comment briefly on this. Gold's been something uh, two shows ago. We, didn't, we weren't in yesterday, but come on. Let me see if I can remove something here that might help this chart. Give me two seconds, guys. Does that help? Nope. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, that's not helping the situation. All right, so uh, we're going to take a look at gold, and I, I, you know, I implicitly know where the inflection ports are on our scanner. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of pull up our daily chart via the scanner, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to go into gold since we can't get our e signal chart to work right there right now. Uh, the, the new daily box, as you remember, guys, 1173 up into 1210 with the POC at uh, at uh, 1187. So the weeklies, as we know, we can look at the chart 1171 into 1228. Let's call it 1229. And then the 240s, 1196. So what's happened here, and there's that 1196, there's that 1171, and there's that 12, 28, 29, right on the weekly. So the dailies, we actually use the scanner to kind of pull up our daily chart in a sense. And as we look at this, I'm just going to pull up our landscape view. That's kind of the multi time frame weekly daily 24060 landscape view. There's the level of the market. So we're still within the fair auction on the weekly, still within the fair auction on the daily. Have we kind of started ramping up a little bit here? And, and you know, was I a big fan of doing anything with gold lately? Um, not a lot of leverage there, not a lot of direction. Um, you know, the, the dollar relativity of it has not been as strong as I'd like to see. So, again, we don't have any daily charts. So, uh, you know, what do we do with gold now? Um, Short-term traders can use the 1196 area support now. Um, we we kind of use those to kind of ratchet this thing up, up a little bit. Let's just look at this. But... You know, I think there's any big time leverage yet on gold. Um, I don't think so. And we've got a major inflection point around 1210 that we're going to have to deal with on the daily. So if you guys are along, 1210 might be somewhat of a very target rich environment for gold. And is it a short up at 1210? Yeah, I, I, th I actually think it is. I think on an intermediate trade level, I still think we're going to rattle around with gold here. And uh, 1210 may be a good chance to pick a little battle, just like 1215 was on the short side before. Okay, so that's my take on gold. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at four stocks of somewhat noteworthy history here. Uh, Cisco, and this is something that's coming out with earnings after the close. And I will bet you I can't pull up our charts here. Ah, but we have it in the scanner. Why is this not? Okay, well, we're going to kind of deal with the daily charts via the scanner here. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go back to our dashboard. And that's because our stocks are kind of preloaded here. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to look for. It's refreshing now. down here there's Cisco so as we look at this the daily inflection points to pay attention to are 28.51 up top 27.62 and we're above the 28.51 and there's that weekly up there 29.87 we're going to make sense of this in a couple of seconds here there's the daily excuse me there's the landscape view so we kind of know where the level of the market is relative to all these time frames going on. Remember, you got a, an announcement after the close, so we're just kind of trying to prepare for the fallout after that announcement. I'm not a big fan of pulling a Kramer, as you know, and piling people into... God, I remember when he did it. It was like John Deere took a nosedive after he told everybody to get into a long, like, nine points. Never mentioned it. Never mentioned it the following day. Never mentioned it the following week. Just... Probably had a. He probably got some hate mail to say the least. But, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, of not being in those earnings when they come out. So, going back to Cisco, just as a prime example, here's that weekly, here's that 29.87 that we saw on the scanner. Um, now, consider, you know, considering that this is, uh, you know, obviously above the current daily inflection points that we just talked about, in my opinion, you know, the market, let's just talk about the market for a second, the broad market. The broad market is, is like extremely non-directional right now based on the internals. And I know we've kind of had some powerful rallies and we've we've had some sell-offs, but non-directional, the, the mix of the pack is just kind of leaderless. Um, Cisco on breakouts above 2987, you know, it, you know, Steve Rhodes was kind of hitting the nail on the head the other day or the other week talking about this may ultimately finally end up being a stock picker's market. And then, you know, how do you use all these things? Um, you, I think you use all these things that we're talking about to trade indices. So here's the individual instrument Cisco. Um, I think by default, you've got to look at closes on a weekly above this 29.87 and just take that for what it's worth and, and look at this as a strong stock in a pretty directionless market that's found support very well, especially around 2680 around these weekly. So as we look at these uh, situations with Cisco, this could get clean and clear and it could, you know, we could have a couple of weeks there of just climbing north. So that's the long-term view on it. And I'm going to kind of eliminate the daily because uh, those weeklies takes, take precedence. Now, if we get a bad report, um, or a, a market that kind of just kind of goes back into this 2987 or up top and then pulls back. I think you've got some some reasons to maybe look at some lower term time frames to start looking at this as a short candidate then. But you just kind of got to wait and see. And uh, here we go, Jack in the box. And I can't believe we can't pull up our daily charts here, but we've got every other time frame. Right? Okay, so $90 stock, and this is the situation on the weeklies. Jack in the box. Here we go. We're going to go back in time, and we're going to take a look at this. And this has been one, again, it's by the breakout, by the support on the levels. And if you if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We have kind of pulled back into these 89, 96 areas we bounced off of it this week. I think you wait for this report to come out. And I think if we stay above the 89.96 on Jack in the Box, this is our kind of long-term view. We're just going to stick with that because of our daily chart situation. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep turning the wrench the same way. And uh, Jack in the Box may still power north. I mean, if you just thought it was too high around 50, <laughs> 
you would have suffered through another 50 points. Um, it, you know, this thing could go to 150. All right. So just, it ain't over till it's over. And it ain't over till we have technical damage on the profiles, in my opinion. Let's take a look at JC Penny. God damn, this, I don't understand how this place is still in business. Uh, a lot of shorts in this one, without question. You know, the guy earnings coming out. Do I think it's worth playing? I, I think JC Penny's so up in the air as far as shorts in the marketplace, cash, fundamental reasons. Um, I'm actually suggesting not to even mess with this until the earnings come out and maybe a couple of days of shakeout happen on JC Penny. Let's take a look at Shake Shack. I hate that dealing that coming up. So, you know, this is kind of like an Alibaba situation. We really need to kind of keep drilling down into the different time frames. But $65 stock, I just don't have our dailies here. Let me try something here real quick, guys. Try something really quick. <sighs> Chart. I don't think I can fix it, guys. Sorry about that. We're just going to cut two minutes and I'll try to fix it on the next break. Shake Shack, uh, here's the inflection points that we have to go on right now. The short term, excuse me, SDSPs. Sorry about that. SHAK. And we don't have this in the scanner, so this is the short-term inflection points, 67, 56, down in 61, 68. That's going to be something to leverage off of those two on the breakouts outside or, you know, I, I again, this has been a pretty good run-up from uh, 40 to 80 in the last three months. We pulled back into 65. You know, do, do I know what this company is going to do long-term? Um, I'm just looking at the technicals, and we're kind of leaving the dailies out right now, so we're a little bit handicapped until I can get that back up after break, but we'll, we will revisit it. Had some emails about Facebook. I'm just amazed we can't get our daily chart up. There we go. Um, 79.27 was that big number that we kind of had to stay above, and now – that were within the middle of the fair auction. I was just telling somebody on the phone the other day, um, you know, can I buy Facebook? Should I buy Facebook? Uh, you know, I, you try to pick a battle around the 79.27. You kind of factor in your appetite for risk. You may look at, or, you know, you, you may be a long-term investor and looking at 79.27 down into 73.48 as a collection area. Collection area being accumulation of longs. It depends on how you're looking at this, but I think you gotta be willing to say, uncle, on a long-term basis below 7348 and that number used to be if you remember you've watched the show 7297 before that so we'll be right back i'll try to get our daily charts up Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Do you know the seven most critical factors that influence every decision you make and how not knowing these will jeopardize the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve? I'm Steve Rhodes, morning host at TFNN.com, and for the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets of human growth, the same formulas used by leaders of nations, billionaires and millionaires, and the most successful athletes on the planet. Would you like to break through any obstacle that gets in between you and the success you deserve? Would you like to turn fear into strength? If you could find a way to achieve, be fulfilled, and live a life of meaning, wouldn't you want to know the answer? I'll teach you the factors that control your state of mind and the drivers that impact every thought, emotion, behavior, and action we take in my new webinar, The Psychology of Trading. Join me for this two-part online event where I'll unveil the secrets to human pattern recognition because they're not what you think. And soon, you'll have the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on The Psychology of Trading to begin your journey now. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Michael fixed our charts, so we... Uh it's our problem, not a signals problem. Here we go. Let's just do a little quick review. We've talked about some stocks and um, just wanted to kind of pull up Shake Shack now that we can kind of get some information on it. And there we go. So the only thing we've got to kind of hang our hat on Shake Shack is is the larger inflection points, which I'm more interested in. If you watch this show, you know that. It's around 67 is the kind of the, the fence, if you will, for Shake Shack. And, and why is that the fence? Because, you know, We've kind of gotten below the profiles. We've used them all the way up since the stock went, you know, public and bonkers. Um, 6690, 67 is the area that we've kind of closed below and, and gone back and retested, and they're kind of just hovering right below it. So, again, the earnings need to come out, and then you might need to use that as a kind of a, a wall to fall on one side or the other, like a kind of a Humpty Dumpty wall. All right, here we go. Let's review the S&Ps. Let's just kind of get a little bit of an outlook possibly here. Uh, again, not a big fan of going along these things. 2099, 2100, just like 2103 was there. This is something I'm looking for to, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say that that might not be a bad situation to get into on the short side. Make sure you put your stops 
oriented above that 2100 100 area why just letting this kind of tell the story um here's the uh the scanner here's the breath situation there's our breaths They've been just flipping around not a lot of direction and that kind of is not something the market really can have conviction about going north on and i know we've had some incredible bounces here but we are passing on those and we're just looking for the inflection points to take advantage of on the short side and we've done well talking about that and waiting patiently we talked about not you know just being in the wind on the short side as these rallies happen we try some things we take our medicine we try some things we take our medicine and uh the risk reward scenario lose a little lose a little lose a little make a lot the mo of any good trader by the way all right let's take a look at the dax really quick we hadn't talked about this one before we go to the finality of the show here this has been something um not a lot to hang on here on on hang on to here on, on the intermediates but you know we had that profile up here above price action went and pissed it just like the uh the dollar situation very similar not a lot of reasons to get along this in any big way down here except for our weekly which i'm you know we have a weekly profile in the dax 11 4 30 we've been talking about that but i'm not a big fan of the dax hanging in there um so uh, again, we may have some lower prices on the DAX and breakdowns below 11,430 may have to be sold on this particular uh, futures product. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ really quick. Just give some numbers for you for everybody gets going today. Uh, this is one that's it's been kind of nice to, to watch it. Um, it was a breakdown situation that we were able to take advantage of a little bit quicker than the S&P the other day. Targets down 4370 and then we kind of come up into these areas up here looking at the breadth on our S&Ps and the NASDAQ, and, and look how we've just literally traveled the entire fair auction and stayed within the confines, basically. And we, you know, those inflection points are sometimes great things to lean on, folks. So what do we do with it now? Um, again, I'm, I'm a big fan of this going back and retesting 47.30 based on our breadth situation. And why is that? What do, what do we have to lean on here? Here's the 240s, and I think anytime we get back down below 4426, we can step on the gas on the short side and just try to meet those daily unfair lows. Guys, you've been great. Stay tuned. Steve Rhodes, he's fantastic, and uh, we'll pick it back up again tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.